Good, beautiful, cool afternoon. We're so glad you're here. We daily vlog. So if you like today's video, make sure you come back tomorrow and tomorrow. At least those two because it's going to be unique vlog situation because in just about three hours I am starting the Goggins Challenge, the 4x4x48 four by four by 4 by four by challenge. Alright, Sarah and I were just talking about dinner plans and like so fuel plans. Fuel plans. Yeah, this this challenge I'm doing is weird because it's like it's gonna be hard and, and, and it's like basically an ultra challenge, but because it's broken up, it feels not as daunting, but it's gonna be like progressive breakdown because of lack of sleep and the continuous running. But I don't need to like fuel as much as like a typical ultra mm -hmm. because I have these breaks where my digestion can catch up, where my stomach can catch home. up. Like and I'm could, home. Yeah. Um but I'm gonna start it off. There's enough time for my stomach to digest this enough. Where I'm gonna I'm gonna get a Martin's drink mix 160 to get my glycogen count up and ready for like the next to get this really going. And I'm gonna have some of this pasta. But we're looking about two and a half hours away from first run. We have some rice made, and I'm gonna make some lentils. We're gonna eat some beans and some veggies for dinner. I should take I should take a nap. Well, you have an hour. I have to work still. Yeah. <laughs> All right, it's 5 p.m. exactly one hour until I start the 4x4x48. Hey, it's me, Sarah. Here's Sarah. She's ordering a pump. Yeah, a breast pump. That is approved. This one's through our insurance, right? Yes. Cool. So she's ordering that. Um, I'm finishing up work. I have like an automation that's going to continue to run for like the next like 30, 40 minutes. But I'm just like mentally resting, getting in the zone, finishing up hydration, watching how to run 100 miles, which is one of my favorite 28 minute videos um about running it's about these two guys who aren't runners but they train to run 100 mi 100, mi 100 miles um so i'll put the link down below if you're interested it's 28 minutes it's super it's super just a good story of two friends trying to take on this challenge athletic challenge when they're not runners Alrighty, off he goes 605 thus begins the four by four by 48 challenge it's going to be a long two days, I think. No, it's going to be good. It's going to be good. It's going to be long, though. I think, honestly, when, in my opinion, when you, like, always are, like, looking towards your next, like, time, I feel like days go by fast, and so maybe go by fast. I think it is going to go by fast. Yeah. But it's going to be interesting with the whole, like, non-stopness to it. Yeah. I'm excited. All righty, friend. Love See you. Love you in a little bit. Love you. So I'm going to show you guys what I'm making for dinner. It is one of my absolute favorite and easy, like, really don't have to think about it meals. Um, you can make this a couple of different ways, but tonight I'm frying up the vegetables. So it's just a full onion, minced garlic. Oh, we're getting, we're getting foggy. Hold on. And then a full red pepper, a full green pepper, and then salt and black pepper. I literally cannot stop sneezing because I added a lot of black pepper. Um, so once that cooks for a little while longer, I'm going to add in a can of um, pineapple chunks with the juice and then just like let it simmer and let it thicken up. Um, I'm going to add some barbecue sauce. I, I'm thinking more barbecue sauce than soy sauce. Sometimes I do soy sauce. Um, but just kind of keep it like a little bit more neutral for Peter's stomach while he runs so much. Um, I sometimes bake this. I used to make it with chicken. Um, but it's perfectly delicious on its own. And then my other like truly favorite way of eating it is on shish kebabs, like chopping up the pineapple, like fresh pineapple, peppers and the onions and grilling it. Um, but then with like a barbecue sauce marinade or something. So this is kind of like the simple version. It takes a little bit less time because you're not baking and you're not grilling. It's just fast. Um, but yeah, then you can have it over pasta, you can have it over rice, you can have it with beans, you can have it with a lot of different things. Um, and so that is going to be just like in our fridge for the next couple of days for the both of us. But it's also kind of just like an easy dinner to add to whatever type of other like additional fuel that Peter will be eating. So the pineapples and barbecue sauce are in. I'm gonna bring it to a boil and then just have it simmer 
and get the sauce to thicken up a bit. And I, um, I usually end up adding more barbecue sauce. Um, but I would just recommend like looking up a good marinade or kind of like to your liking if you like it sweeter, if you like it spicier. You could also put sriracha in this. Um, but we're, we're not keeping, we're not making it spicy like we typically would. Um, yeah, the barbecue sauce is kind of up to you. All right, it is beautiful. It's like 72 and a cool breeze. It's gonna keep dropping. I think on my 10 o'clock run, it might be closer to like 60, but it feels good to be out. Um, still breaking a good sweat. Beautiful Park Avenue. It, it's weird, I haven't run during the daytime since Florida opened up, loosened some of its restrictions for like restaurants and stores and Park Avenue is packed. He's back. I'm back. Just rinsing Four. off my sweaty headband. <laughs> Four down, 36 and two workouts to go. Because that's the thing is like, you're running 40 miles, but you still have two, two, workouts. two a.m. workouts. Feel good. Good. Um, it was really nice out. It was busy in downtown. Really? Uh, Winter Park. Oi, oi, oi. It was weird seeing shops open. Like I realized I haven't run in, during daylight. I just oh, since on my run, the but, phase one yeah. started here. Um, but there were a lot of people out. Not enough face masks. So did you have to dodge a lot of people? I ran in the street most of the time. Oh, okay. Well, hopefully, ten o'clock tonight will be a little oh, bit easier. Sure. Plus, I'm gonna do a cool. different round. Yeah. Awesome. Good job. Goggins challenge. Here's the delicious meal Sarah made for me. Got a key to right now because I feel good right now, but I feel like I'm gonna feel like garbage later is to keep hydrating, keep eating, and keep rolling the legs out. All right, we are getting ready for the night's festivities, Guardians of the Galaxy number one. These actually, the way that, the order that we're doing it, they're back to back, and it's perfect because it's two hours and two minutes, and I have two and a half hours until my next run. Come on, find it. Hey. Everybody say a prayer for Awesome Mix Live 20. 20 summer. It was announced that it's going to be there. But that was before COVID. Yeah. And we'll see what kind of uh, cuts they'll make once the park's open. Yeah. But if everyone just has a prayer. So we just finished Guardian. That was my first time seeing it fully. We'd started it before. Peter seen it. Um music is so good. Story is so good. So forward. much more makes sense to me in my life. About the about Marvel and Awesome Mix Live, awesome Mix Live at Epcot in general. I mean, I I knew like I knew them as like pop culture characters, you know, um, and all that stuff. So Peter is gearing up. I have to get deep water first. Oh gosh, okay. All right, it is just before ten. I'm going out for my next run. Um, I know it's not about like it's all about like just getting yourself into a, a place of, un of discomfort. To like kind of be like a humbling like exercising kind of thing but it's i have comfort a little bit of comfort knowing that this is the the even though it's my second run until i'm done with this that i don't go on a run again until 6 a.m i have a work i'm going to do it too but because of curfew i won't go out so i'm going to head out um i'm this time i'm going closer to downtown downtown orlando rather than downtown winter park um so let's go check it out not good for mr bones so, I know Sarah and I say it from time to time, but I'll do a little disclaimer here because we always say we are not a Disney vlog, we are a daily vlog, the Brookhart Project, you follow our life. We just happen to live in Disney, so we go to Disney often. And I think one of the things that has come from COVID is if anybody ever questioned that before, the eight weeks of home vlogs and any of you who have stayed and enjoyed time with us proves that. Because if we were Disney vlogs, we wouldn't have posted eight weeks worth of home vlogs not going to Disney. And I say that because uh, sometimes we have to remind people, all of you wonderful people and that enjoy our adventures with us and some people enjoy our adventures until we do something or say something and they choose to leave and that's okay. Because I'm just honored to have any single minute you give us to share in our adventures. But you know, we do talk about how we had two gay roommates. We do talk about my wife's uterus on this, this YouTube. We do talk about our IVF and our attempts for conception that but some people are against their religious beliefs and that's perfectly fine. We support all walks of life. And that brings us to today's point where 
Sarah and I have had a hard day because the world's having a hard time and a lot of articles came out and a lot of news finally finally got spread about a young man who was shot and killed two months ago and the world's just becoming aware of it and we're just becoming aware of it and that's part of the frustration but I don't know all the details and the police are supposed to be finding out all the details and that's what their job is to do but a lot of talk is going on about different kinds of privilege and I, Sarah and I ask one thing, if you can take anything from my little spiel right now, and it's, there's many good things to be, to live by the, the statement of ignorance is bliss. This is one thing that it is not. You may not think there's such things as white privilege or male privilege or American privilege, but they are real. Sarah and I are not oblivious to that. To be honest, I'll use myself as an example because that's the only, only way I can talk is my personal experiences. I know I deserve, I've worked hard, all of the, the opportunities I've been given, the promotions, the jobs, the schoolings, but I am not oblivious to the fact that I'm a young, middle-class, white male, and that had some degree in getting me the opportunities. I had to do the work once I was given the opportunity, but I know there's many people in this world that would have not had the same chances, that would not feel comfortable right now running at this hour on these streets at 10.30, but I've never felt not safe I've never had to worry about a cop driving by and I don't know how that feels and I never will know how that feels because I'm a white male. But Sarah and I just ask that you just be open, try to try to be a little bit more observant and aware of these kinds of situations because I don't know how to fix it in society. There's smarter people, more kind-hearted people that probably have ideas, but what Sarah and I constantly try to do is just to be more aware of it. Because if we're more aware of it, if we ever find ourselves leaning into that privilege that Sarah and I both are, are given at times, we don't want that and we don't believe that that should be a way of life. Our thoughts and our love are with the family of that young man and for anybody struggling. But I'm gonna go finish, there's my spiel. Um, and I stick to it. So Friday, when I'm doing one of my last runs, I'm running in honor of that young man because he was just on the jog and he didn't get to go home that night. Wait a minute. Sarah's off the phone with her mom and we're having a bowl of cereal. Yours looks way healthier than mine. That's okay. Oh, I can't wait for this. I know, doesn't it look actually And you can finish the last bit of this national park video I've been watching. Look at this snuggle bug. So, what time is it? Past midnight? Peter fell asleep in an instant. Um, so he's gonna work out at 2. Mm -hmm. Casual. <laughs> Casual 2 a.m. workout. Grant gave me his login for his Peloton account. Oh, sweet. Um, I think I'm gonna go to bed because I'm yawning every two seconds. Excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. Um, we're watching The Office, had a good relaxing last hour or so, but time for me to hit the hay. Good luck to you and your workout, good luck to you and your 6am. I'm worried about not waking up for the 6am. Just put on a really loud, a really, really loud alarm. Okay. Alright, it's 2.06 in the morning. I'm gonna find me a nice 30 to 40 minute um, Peloton video using Grant's account. And then we're gonna try to get some shut eye after that, just a little bit. 20 minute cardio video, so I'm gonna do two of these. Um, and then we'll get going. I'm, the sleep deprivation is hurting. I got a little drowsy in the last 45 minutes, not being by myself, but we're getting through it. Oh, that was more than I expected. All right, 2.56 in the morning. Let's do this message. It is technically hast, but it is May 7th. Today's message is by Rex Hubler. Be a fountain, not a drain. I like that. That was more intense than I expected. That second one, it was a hit class. There were two hit classes, high interval, high intensity interval training. Um, 
both of them were just on a mat and that second one was way more intense than the first. Eve eventually got tired of me because it is three in the morning. So that second one, I think I was also able to actually work out more than the first, but we, I'm gonna take a quick shot and wasn't sure I was gonna have to, but I'm gonna take a quick shower and then try to get a couple hours because I need to be out the door in three hours for another four miles before I start work. Uh, yes, I am working Friday. Uh, I'm just taking like a lunch and then a break to do those two four mile sessions during the work day. Um, but I need to get going because I got three hours. So I'm burning, burning resting time. We love you guys. You guys are amazing. Uh, it's good to be home. We know what our goals are, we know what we hope to accomplish, and believe me, it's the most exciting and challenging assignment we've ever tackled at Walt Disney Productions.